Hi, this is part five of thermodynamics of steam. Today what we're going to do is look at the amount of energy that goes into heating a substance, so including phase change maybe, um, and understand what goes into that heating process. So one of the things that we have talked about or used is the term enthalpy. And so enthalpy from a thermodynamics point of view is the symbol H um, and units for it kilojoules per kilogram and that is enthalpy. Um, enthalpy what it is is it's a measure of really the total amount of energy that's stored inside of a substance. So it accounts for things like the internal energy so as we said the the little movement of the molecules um, it accounts for the compressibility of the substance so the pressure that's built up as well so really a couple of major pieces of energy temperature and pressure that's stored inside of the substance and so enthalpy from our perspective is really important because if we look at a few things so for a, a, a heating process, so say inside of a boiler, what we have is the heat, um, which uh, we use the symbol Q for. So Q, I'll use capital Q. Capital Q is equal to the mass times the change in enthalpy. So if we increase in enthalpy, um, it would be represented by a heat was added to the substance. So enthalpy becomes really powerful for us because all of a sudden we can take these fluid properties and relate it back to, to heat. Um, okay, so let's look at a question involving calculating heat. So how much total heat is needed to turn 10 kilograms of 40 degree liquid water into dry steam at 2000 kPa? And then once we found that, how much of the heat was latent and how much was sensible? Okay, so um, we're going to need to go to our tables and find uh, a few things. Okay, so um, first of all, if we think about what um, what's happening here, what we have is some water. Okay, it's 40 degrees Celsius. And it's being heated and eventually becomes dry steam. So, so X is equal to 1 at 2000 kPa. And uh, I'm assuming here that my whole heating process is taking place at the 2000 kPa. Okay, so what I need to find here is going to be an H, and I'm going to need to find an H over here. So if I think about where I'm going to go to find my H, well, in this case, I'm given a pressure. We'll start over this side. I'm given an X is equal to 1. What it's going to say is it's going to be my H G value at 2000 kPa. And so if I go to my steam tables, um, what I have is my pressure base table here and my HG value at 2000 kPa is going to be 2799.5 so is equal to 2799.5 and that is kilojoules per kilogram uh, if I look over here, what I have is liquid water, and for liquid water, I'm going to go to my temperature table to find my value. So at 40 degrees out of my temperature table. So I come down here to my temperature table. 40 degrees, and what I want to find is my HF value. So 167.57 is my HF value. So 167 point, what did I say there? <laughs> 57. 
and that again is kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, so the total heat, which is a capital Q, is equal to the mass times your change in enthalpy. So in this case would be 10 kilograms times, well, what was my change in enthalpy? Well, it ended up being 2799.5 minus 167.57. So it changed by this gap, giving me a total of So 10 kilograms times 2631.9 kilojoules per kilogram, meaning kilograms is going to cancel out in the total amount of heat, 26319 kilojoules. So that was the total. The next question would be, well, how much of this was latent and how much of this was sensible? Um, because I know the entire phase change happen, uh, I could argue that my latent heat would be my HFG at 2000 kPa. That's the latent heat of vaporization. Since all of it changed into dry steam, then I know that that was how much was added in during that heating process. So if I go back to 2000, uh, what I could see is that my HFG, 1890.7 kilojoules per kilogram. So that was 1890.7 kilojoules per kilogram. So the Q latent would be equal to um, 10 kilograms times 1890.7 kilojoules per kilogram. And that guy would be equal to 18907 kilojoules. Your Q sensible, well, Q sensible is going to be equal to the Q total minus your Q latent. And in this case, Q. So your QS would be end up being 7412 kilojoules. Okay, we have one last section in this module so what um, the kind of the final point is that we can look at the efficiency of a boiler now that we can understand heat and so there's a couple ways we can calculate heat one is to calculate how much energy is contained inside of a fuel and multiply it by the mass of the fuel uh, the other way now we have enthalpies of steam and water and so if we compare the energy that we produce in the form of steam compared to the fuel that we burn inside of a boiler, then we can figure out how efficient a boiler is. And so here's a question. We have a boiler generates seven kilograms of dry saturated steam for every kilogram of fuel oil it burns. Uh, the oil has a heating value of 30,000 kilojoules per kilogram. So every kilogram of that oil I burn, it'll produce 30,000 kilojoules of heat. The feed water is supplied at 60 Celsius and the boiler pressure is 200 kPa. So calculate this boiler's efficiency. Okay, so we have a few things that we need to do here. Um, one of them is that we need to figure out some enthalpies. Okay, so a um, couple things we need to do. Enthalpy of our 60 degree water. Um, we're going to have to go to our temperature table and find our HF at 60 degrees. So if we go to our tables, scroll down to our temperature table, 
So at 60 degrees, our HF value 251.13. So that was equal to 251.13 kilojoules per kilogram. Um, we then also are, are going to need our enthalpy value of dry steam at 200 kPa, which is going to be my Hg value at 200 kPa. So I'm going to go to my pressure tables at 200 and find my... Hg value. Okay, so here's my pressure tables. Um, my Hg is down this column. I'm going to have to scroll down a little bit to get there. So 200, if I carefully come across, find my Hg value, it's 2706.7. So 2706.7 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, and so this is my this is my steam and water steam and water side. And then I have a fuel side and I think everything that I need is given in there. Find your equation. Your equation is in your academic supplement. Uh, it's in your textbook as well. Um, here it is in the academic supplement. We have some boiler formula lay. Um, boiler efficiency is the mass flow of steam times the change in enthalpy, so steam and feed water, divided by the mass flow of fuel times the caloric value of fuel. Okay, so uh, let me just grab this guy and we'll put him on the screen so we can uh, remember him. over here. Okay, so boiler efficiency is going to be equal to how much steam am I producing? Well, 7 kilograms times my change in enthalpy. So 2706.7 minus 251.13. Divide it by my mass flow of steam, so per kilogram of oil burn, meaning one kilogram times 30,000 kilojoules per kilogram. Uh, if I calculate that out, 2706.7 minus 251.13, all of that multiplied by 7, divided by 1, divided by 30,000, what I get is a value of 0 0.573 or 57%. So what this is saying is that of the heat that I'm putting into the boiler, 57% of it is turning into steam and then the other 43% is being lost, um, wasted energy up the stack. All right, that comes to the end of our chapter 19 uh, information. I uh, hope you enjoyed it.